Welcome everyone to the first day of June. This reflection today that I offer to you is a much more serious one than I normally do when I give you parish updates or share with you different things that are happening in our community. I just thought with all that's happening in our world uh, beyond the pandemic, but with all of these riots that are happening across our nation, I thought it'd be good to address this topic. I actually had planned a very fun video uh, with my cats to make everyone kind of relax during this pandemic period. But with this recent escalation of violence and of um, difficulty that's in the air, I thought I'll push that off maybe to later this week. But I wanted to address with all of you what we've been hearing in the news, very, very difficult times. Uh, what every, everything that has sparked from the death of, of George Floyd um, and all of this confusion and unrest that's kind of rippling across our country. And I don't know if many of you know, but I actually come from a multiracial family myself. My uh, aunt, uh, Carolyn, uh, sadly she died uh, way too young. Uh, she was just a beautiful, wonderful person, almost like a second mother to me. Uh, but she was African-American. As I said, she died too young. She died of lupus, which sadly affects uh, disproportionately higher numbers of African-American women. Uh, but my Aunt Carolyn married my Uncle Rick, two wonderful people. I lived with them for a few years towards the end of my teenage years, right before, actually one year, right before I entered the seminary. And she and I spent a lot of time together. And when they eventually adopted their daughter, Angela, uh, who herself was half black and half white and is just a wonderful uh, cousin of mine, but also my first uh, goddaughter, my first of three uh, goddaughters that I've been blessed to kind of guide and support throughout my life. Um, I just remember what a special moment that was. And I wanted to share with you just yesterday, I had a long conversation uh, with my cousin, my goddaughter, uh, spoke a lot of, about a lot of different things. Um, and obviously this is a crazy moment in our world with so much uh, violence and ex, 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 what, what's the word there? I can't even think of it. Escalation, sorry. Escalation of this tension that exists. And, and we understand where it comes from. Uh, obviously, the death of George Floyd has uh, created this spark of uh, a lot of anger and pent-up resentment that's been going on. But beyond Angela and my wonderful relationship with my Aunt Carolyn, um, I also wanted to share with you my grandparents' generation. My grandfather had a brother who was a very famous Jesuit priest here in this country. He was actually the first priest to hold a chair at Harvard from 1965 to 1970. Very brilliant, uh, wonderful priest and uh, sociologist. I've kind of followed somewhat in his footsteps in the priesthood and in sociology, though I never did become a Jesuit. He, um, he was very, very active in the late 40s and 1950s down in the deep south, down in New Orleans, uh, really strongly fighting against segregation at a time when the civil rights movement had not really started. I put a link in my email blast to a book written by Bentley Anderson called Black, White, and Catholic. And it's basically the history of desegregation in New Orleans and the pivotal role that my Uncle Joe uh, played in his uh, lifetime. And I'm also put in a little um, link to an article that I wrote on my, would have been my uncle's 100th, uh, birthday and what a wonderful uh, man that he was. But he would be there pounding the, the pulpit in the Deep South in the late 40s, early 50s, saying you can't be Catholic and segregationist at the same time. And you can imagine that was not a popular uh, message. Sorry, my camera just dropped on me. That was not a popular message at that time. And it led obviously to a, a lot of tension. But I was always so proud of that part of my uncle's life, really uh, fighting against the injustices uh, that were inflicted upon the African-American community. So I say all of this because this topic um, of the this one police officer who uh, put his knee 
on the neck of George Floyd and basically caused his death. Um, it really affected me, and I'm sure it's affecting all of you, and then all the riots that have ensued. It's uh, just a very, very difficult time, and so it brought me back um, to that idea. I was only not even one years of age when uh, Martin Luther King was killed, but I remember watching a documentary last year on Robert F. Kennedy and his efforts the night that uh, Martin Luther King was killed. It was Bobby Kennedy who was in Indianapolis making this speech and he was told by the police uh, before he went into this really um, totally African-American community that they couldn't uh, protect him from any violence as he was making this announcement. I think it's one of the most beautiful and powerful speeches uh, that I've ever heard and I wanted to share it with all of you. It actually made me cry before as I was uh, watching it and listening to it. And sadly, just two months after Bobby Kennedy delivered that very, very beautiful and powerful address, he himself uh, would be assassinated. So this effort that I'm making, this outreach to all of you, obviously is not meant to be a political statement, not taking any side, just wanted to share some reflections on uh, the sadness that comes in. We all know that the vast, vast, vast majority of police are wonderful men and women who do serve and protect our communities. We do know that there are some bad apples. Priests, uh, sorry, police are human beings. But it also gets to my point of the anger and the outrage. I know I felt with the whole priestly pedophile crisis and the anger that so many people justifiably had. It's kind of, to me, it's a parallel situation that we know the vast majority of priests would never harm a child. We know the vast majority of police would never harm uh, a, a fellow citizen. And yet once in a while, you get one really bad priest, you get one bad police officer, but let us not throw out the baby with the bath water. Let us not now say that all police officers are horrible because that's simply not the truth. But let us truly try our best to be a community that feels the outrage of our fellow citizens, that understands why there's so much pent up anger. Let us be one with them. Let us accompany them as Pope Francis says, let us really try to understand why there is so much pain in the African-American community. And let's look into our hearts to see, are there things that we can change in our society uh, to make them not feel so scared, to not feel uh, so vulnerable in so many different ways. Um, but also too, I'm definitely not supportive of the looting that goes on. Uh, to me, that's always left me kind of scratching my head. I, I don't understand why that would be done, why other violence would be inflicted upon other innocent people. I mean, there's a part of me could almost understand why they want to burn a police car or something, because it's a symbol of what they're angry at. But to destroy someone's shop, to destroy their livelihood, um, to me, that doesn't make sense. And I think it actually violates the, um, the legacy of Martin Luther King and of his whole idea of this, you know, nonviolent approach. Um, of what he was so famous for. So my little plea from my little corner of Bergen County um, is really a plea for peace for all of us, that we may truly be people that never inflict violence on others, that we be people that know how to react peacefully to difficult situations, but that we truly be people of empathy, that we truly be Catholic. And you've heard me say so many times, the word Catholic means universal that I really do feel the pain of my fellow brothers and sisters, that I reach out to them in what ways I can, and that I look for peaceful, positive solutions. And even if it's protest, a peaceful protest that eventually brings about the greater good that we all look for. And there's that quote that Bobby Kennedy gave at the end of his speech, that idea of tame, taming the savageness of man and making the world a gentler place. Um, may we all strive for that. So if there is any conflict in your life, because uh, all we can do is kind of sweep in front of our own houses, if there's any conflict in your life, may this be a week in which we try to settle those differences, where we try to not allow resentment and anger uh, to build up in our own lives and our own hearts. May we all really strive to be Christians that are peacemakers, 
Christians that are empathetic to the sufferings of others, Christians that truly live that message of Jesus Christ, which ultimately is one of mercy and forgiveness. So um, that's my little uh, speech for this week. It is something that's very dear to my heart. And as I said, I don't pretend to be a spokesman uh, for an official stance of the Catholic Church on this issue. I am putting a link from the Bishop's Conference so you can read uh, what they wrote. But these are just my own little reflections, my own little ideas that I wanted to share with all of you. You may agree, you may disagree. If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation with you so we can mutually grow in this appreciation um, for our nation and really look for ways, as Bobby Kennedy said, to, to really heal the wounds and really go forward as a nation ever more united. So those are my thoughts and my prayers for all of you. Maybe a peaceful week and tune in again on Thursday. Thursday, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put up uh, the video we made with my two cats to have a little bit of a, a peacefulness. But we'll have to wait to see how things unfold this week, if that's the appropriate time for that or not. So thank you, everyone. God bless you with peace. And may you bless our world and your families and your neighborhoods with that same peace. Amen.